So this is the second part of the tool review of the Ortor Laser Master 3. I kind of went through all the technical stuff in the first video, so I broke it up into two because it was just going to be too long. So in this video, like I said, I was making another lampshade. This was actually the original plan I had for the lampshade, but then I got sent another laser, which is why I came up with two different designs. Now this will probably look much better on camera than it does in person. Um, this is a prototype. So the original plan was to kind of have this tree silhouette and then light comes through very thin veneer, quite pretty, and it would back light and create that that silhouette um, the problem is is for the size of the shade i needed veneer is really expensive and i didn't want to spend the money on it if this wasn't going to work so essentially what i did was i made my own veneer in the shop i tried out the pattern and then to see if it could, would work and i'm actually really happy i did that because i learned a ton of stuff on this build while it does function as a lampshade, and I'm going to go put it on the lamp a little later and try and get some shots of it at nighttime, this will not work in the long run. But um, I do think that the way I originally was planning on building it well. So that is essentially um, what this video is going to entail, and that will con conclude the, the laser reviews. Now, I have gotten three more emails, I believe, about reviewing lasers, and I don't want this channel to turn into a tool review channel. Uh, first off, that's not really where my interests lie, and also they do take up a lot of time on top of all of the other shop work. So what I was thinking of doing, because a lot of people in the comments have said how they have thought about getting a laser is, if there's interest in it and you could comment um, about that, I'll talk to those companies about doing a tool review video, but then at the end of the video, giving away the laser. Um, I've honestly never done a giveaway, so I don't know exactly how they work. I'll have to see to someone who I'm assuming watch, someone who watched the, the, watched the video. So if there's interest in that, let me know and I'll reach out to the companies. I don't see why they would care if they're giving it to me versus someone else. And then um, I'll have a couple more of those coming out, but but way in the future. So next week is is back to regular sort of uploading. So I had this plan to make this lampshade because the chaotic pattern of trees I thought would work well with, with this sort of construction method. So like I've said in these other laser videos, I don't know how to make these patterns yet myself. So I ended up buying um, another file for this. These are cheap enough that buying them is not really that big of a deal. So it comes with the SVG and a couple other files. I ended up using the PNG because I could edit them in Photoshop. You cannot edit SVGs in Photoshop. So I just printed out the pattern to start in some quarter inch oak. Uh, apply and that worked out great and then I modified the pattern to make it a little bit bigger because the smaller one the branches were super fragile and they were breaking and that also worked out well you could see I'm curving this material so I could bend it but the problem was is all that material on the edges isn't removed because I don't have a border so what I did in Photoshop was I cropped the image down so that you didn't really see much of the stump and then I went through and I added a black border one with one on the edge because this is like a 44 piece sheet of uh, material so my machine only cuts I think 15 and 3 quarters so I was going to need a couple a couple segments essentially so that that black border would allow for all the material to re be removed I could upload it into Lightburn and fit it into into um, my my size grid which is what you're looking at and I could trace it and then I had one of these so this is essentially what I'm going to be cutting so it was working pretty well um, with the prototypes and of course I'm experimenting with speed how fast things are cutting out but you can see this is going to look pretty cool once there's um, a light source behind it so I was working on a project which will be coming up on the channel and I took apart someone's pieces, old piece of furniture in hopes of reusing some of the material and I had this piece of quarter inch walnut veneer um, that was left over. 
So it's not quarter inch, it's like three thirty seconds. So it had kind of an ugly color on the back. I removed that. I'm going to use this for the prototype. I don't like spending money on prototypes, so it worked out that it was free. Um, once it was sanded, I ripped it down to 15 and a half is the, is the dimension I'm working with. And like I said, it's about 49 inches uh, long. And I figured that out because once again, I figured out the circumference of the lampshade I needed um, by using pi. There is math involved in woodworking, so that is how I got that measurement of four. I believe it was a 15 and a half um, shade gave me a little, you know, that you were working with fractions of an inch here, but about 49 just to make things simple. So this whole thing, like in order for it to bend, because I'm not using true veneer, I went through and I put a bunch of curves on it. You could see I did a bunch of test cuts on smaller pieces beforehand, but essentially this was just a process of putting a bunch of curves in the back of this. You're cutting almost completely through the piece, and then this will allow me to bend this into um, a circle. So this was a rather long process. This took about an hour. The problem with this process is you're not gonna get um, super flat curves because material is so thin and the blade spinning so fast it wants to lift it up. So I did get some places where it was a little thicker than it should be, but as you can see, once it was done, I was pretty happy with the fact that it was going to bend. Um, on my two edges, I made lap joints so that when I bent the shade around, I would have a joint for them to connect. So you can see on one edge, um, I left a little bit of material going about halfway down, creating that lap. Um, the radial arm saw is pretty, gives me a pretty deep cut, but not enough. So you can see there was a little bit left. So I just had to flip this once I was done, cut it on the other side. And then you can see I flipped this upside down and made a top side lap, and that will join my bottom side lap once this is curved into a circle. So then I lifted up the laser uh, by, um, by three quarters, and I had plywood going all across the bottom so I could slide this through. I can make one cut and slide it through. So you can see here's my first pattern with the border on the edge and the border on the sides. I just imported my Photoshop PNG into the program, used the trace function, and that created my pattern. And then obviously this is the easiest one going forward and then it would just cut out that pattern. Each one of these, which is about 15 and a half by 15 and a half, um, I'm going at 90% power and 150 speed, took about two and a half hours to, to do all the cuts. So then you could see I used kind of some straight edges to keep this aligned as best as possible. And then I just slid the finish part through the laser so that I could line it up and, and cut my next segment. So then I imported the, the file that has the border on the top and the bottom, but I wanted it to be identical. So what I did was I just overlaid my PNG on top of the file that's still in Lightburn so that it's the exact same dimension, trace function and trace it. And then I just deleted the first one I cut and then I was left with with the middle section. Now on the bottom here, I learned how to use the, the node function and delete these little edges because otherwise the laser will cut any lines that are on your drawing. So I went through and I could just delete those those edges. You'll see in the preview, um, which I don't, I guess I didn't show it, but um, in the preview you could see where the lines are going to be and then this is that cut. It was a little off line here, which you could see, so I made minor adjustments while the laser was moving, which you can do if you're careful. But I was pretty happy with the alignment, getting it, getting it pretty good. So then once again, I'm gonna slide this through again and then cut the third panel. So this time I put, just put some blue painter's tape and I marked where center was so I could slide this all the way through. And then once I get to my new section, I can make sure it's between the painter's tape and lined up with that little post-it note mark I have. Now all the curves on the bottom of this are making it catch on everything, which is why it's hard to slide. But like I said, there's my panel. I lined up the edge between the blue marks. And then as it's cutting, you could see it's pretty accurate. But at this point, if it was off, I would just slide it a little bit. And then I just made sure that this cut all the way um, to the edge in a straight line. And that's all I really did for aligning these. And you can see there is 
the piece. Now I had a little piece left on the end, which I did cut. And to be perfectly honest, I wish I just would have left that piece flat because that's going to be the backside of the shade anyway. But like I said, that's what that looks like with all those panels. I was pretty happy with the, the, the progress at this point, and I had a little piece left. You can see this is what I imported into the program in order to cut this little bit. But like I said, I wish I would have just kept it like that. The other problem was I left the one-sided border on here, so it did cut on the back side as well. And as I learned, um, as I started curving this the border on this was way too thin it should have been at least twice twice as thick i was part of my problem was i didn't have a super sturdy border but there are my essentially i only had to cut three of these at two and a half hours i got this done um in a day the nice thing about these lasers are i was working on other stuff in the shop while the laser was going and then i just used a nail set to remove move the pieces um this all came off pretty good the problem with plywood is, is it's not, um, the thickness can undulate across the piece, so some of them were a little bit harder to, to get out. The nail set has a little bit of a weight to it, so it made it easy to pop the pieces out, because at this point, this is the more material I'm removing, obviously, the, the f more fragile this will be. The other problem I had is where the branches met, um, you'll see they start to peel away. So then to back this, like I said, the light comes through veneer quite nicely. Um, but in order to buy it in one sheet, it's pretty expensive. So for the prototype, I had some poplar. I'm going to rip it into about the 30 seconds of an inch, which is about what the veneer I had laying around the shop was. I chose poplar because I always have some of it on hand because I use it a lot. And it usually doesn't have a lot of knots in it. Um, if you make, make your own veneers, you use material with knots in it. When you go to curve it, um, the, the grain around the knot is not only harder, but it goes in all sorts of different directions. And it usually ends up cracking at that point. But you can see I just have this set up on the tables. Uh, the table saw set up to cut these thin pieces. Now, obviously, this isn't an, an exact science because this, this wood came from Lowe's and I didn't plan it or anything. So you can see there's some thick parts to it in the light but it, it worked out pretty well and I just sanded sanded some of those high spots to make it more even um, on a flat surface before putting it together. So when I came time to choosing glue, I chose a spray adhesive mainly because I thought if I use something like tight bond, which is a little sturdier, when it came time to bend this, the 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 sturdiness of the glue would would make everything crack. So I was trying to get something that had a little bit of flexibility to it. The spray adhesive, which I've used before in other stuff and I've really liked, really didn't hold this very well at all. Um, it was enough to get this this project prototyped and make a video of it, but it is it is starting to peel. But you could see all I did was back these these pieces, and then I waited it for a little bit, and then I came back to it after I edited this video actually, and then I could flip this over. And I had wax paper down, which was good because the spray adhesive just went everywhere. It left these little nurdles all over the place, which I guess is a little fitting because Halloween is coming, but it was quite unsightly. It was a little bit of a bummer, um, all those, those glue nurdles. But I just trimmed up the edges, and you could see it actually looks pretty cool. There's a little bit of gap between the veneer, but that doesn't really bother me on something, on something like this. Um, for the top and the bottom, I needed some structure and I needed something to to hold the lamp on to. So I was going to cut these in the in the program because the program cut circles quite well. But it was going to take another like two and a half hours just to cut the two circles each. So um, at this point, I knew this was not something I was going to be keeping. So I just decided to hand cut them by using. I made it my own compass, measured everything, like I said to get. I, at this point, I believe the circle is a little bit over 15 and a half. I'd have all the math written down somewhere. But anyway, and I just used a jigsaw and cut this all out by hand, which was more than sufficient for what I was doing. For the top one, I'd have some cross members and a center mark so it could go on the, 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 the top of the lamp harp. And then to, to just kind of get this done, 
I put some furniture staples on all the ends to hold it together. It's quite unsightly, but like I said, um, best case scenario with a prototype is it ends up working out better than you thought and you end up keeping it. That has happened to me. It's quite awesome when that happens. But at this point with this one, I knew the glue wasn't going to hold the pattern. It was already cracking in some spots. So I figured I'm just going to kind of get these staples on here so that people can, can get an idea of what this is going to look like on the lamp. And I was already thinking on how to improve this design for, for when I tackle this project again but minus the the nails it actually turned out decently I'm excited to see what it's going to be um, look like uh, lighted up but you could see the edges of the the trees were already pulling up that was the other problem where I had each pattern they really needed to overlap more um, if I do this again which I want to I think what I might do is make a full banner in Photoshop and so that they're all connected without being segmented and then I wanted to try this on actual veneer to see because I've never I didn't know if it was going to be too thin if it was burned through with the laser but the laser cuts this thin material just beautifully you could see the detail this only took about 16 minutes as well and with the thinness of the veneer you could see how well it is going to bend so like I said successful prototype um, once I get my hands on some veneer, I would like to remake this and I probably will make another video of it.